Now that the two adapters are configured, the failover group can be configured. Failover configuration can also be carried out with the edge command utility and information stored in a JSON. Open the class files folder on the desktop, then double click on client failover config.json. This will open the file in Notepad. For a detailed definition of all parameters, consult the documentation in the description. In brief, we need to define a failover group ID to which we will join the adapters we want to fail over, and can optionally give it a name. Then we choose the timeout, which defines how frequently the adapter sends a heartbeat and therefore how quickly the adapter knows to fail over. The failover mode defines how the secondary adapter behaves. Once both adapters are in a failover group, one acts as the primary and sends data, while the other acts as a secondary, ready to take over if the primary is unavailable. There are three ways that this secondary adapter can behave while waiting to take over. Hot, warm, and cold. Hot failover will fail over the fastest, then warm, then cold. However, hot will have the most load on the data source and machine, while warm will have less and cold will have almost no impact. Therefore, when configuring failover modes, consider these trade-offs. For our course, we chose hot failover so we can see the effects more quickly. When you configure failover, you have the option of what endpoint is used to manage the failover between the adapters. Currently, you can either use Aviva Data Hub or an on-prem client failover service as endpoints. For this course, we will be using the client failover service, which has already been installed and configured on Pi SRV02. If you need information on the client failover service, you can find the documentation in the description. Now that we understand the JSON file, we can configure failover with Edge CMD. Back in PowerShell, add these lines to your script file, then run them with the Run Selection button. Edge CMD set client failover dash port 6010 dash file quote c colon slash class files slash client failover config dot json close quote. Once run, you should see an operation has been completed successfully message. Let's see if our configuration was applied. In the lower half of the PowerShell IDE, run the following command. Edge CMD get failover state dash port 6010. The output should look like the following. Since this is the first adapter we have added to the failover group, it will be primary. The other key piece of information here is the failover score of 100, as that indicates that the failover is in a good condition. For more information on each item here, see the documentation in the description. So far, our work has only added the MQTT1 component on Pi SRV02 to our failure group. We now need to do the same on Pi SRV01. The same JSON is on the Pi SRV01 machine, so we can run the same command. Access the Pi SRV01 VM and open the class files folder on the desktop. Then double click on the failover configuration.ps1 file. Add the following line and run Edge CMD, set client failover, dash port 6010 dash file, open quote C, colon slash, class files, slash client failover config dot JSON. Once run, you should see an operation has been completed successfully message. Let's see if our configuration was applied. In the lower half of the PowerShell IDE, run the following command. Edge CMD Get failover state 
dash port 6010. The output should look like the following. Since this is the second adapter we added to the failover group, it will take the secondary role. And again, it is important to note the failover score of 100, which indicates failover is in good health.